and good morning to everyone. We are from Group D, 3 BMMA, Section 1 Slash 1, for the Vehicles Brake System Subject with code BMMA 3053. Today, video will be about the left fork with the title disc brake, inspection, removal, and refitting. In this lab, we will discuss and illustrate the entire operation of removing the disc brake assembly inspecting the disc brake component, refitting the disc brake assembly, inspecting the condition of the disc brake parts, and measuring the rotor disc thickness. Before we begin the lab technique demonstration, I would want to share with you all of the equipment and apparatus that we use in this video. The first piece of equipment we employ is a jack to lift the car. Second, we will need a jack stand to support the car. Then for the tire nut, we tighten and loosen with the end extension and a 22mm box socket. To remove the caliper nut, we use a 14mm ring and coupling spanner. For the thickness measurement, we use a vernier caliper and for the rotor disc check, we use a dial gauge. Procedure of removing and dismantling this brake and brake caliper. Okay, first of all, loosen the wheel nuts and jack the car at consider considerable height and place the jack stands under the car. Then use the extension and 22mm box socket to remove all the nuts from the wheel. After remove the wheel, put it under the wheel for safety purpose. Next, use the coupling or common ring spanner size 14mm to remove the both slide pin from caliper bracket and then take out the caliper bracket. For the caliper frame, we try to remove the piston from the caliper by using the air gun to remove it. This is a procedure to remove and dismantle the disc and brake caliper. For the brake pad inspection, firstly we need to take the rotor disc and then mark the fully around the surface of rotor disc with chalk. Okay, after that, take the brake pad then rub the surface brake pad around the disc brake surface slowly. After the mark, inspect the surface on brake pad is not fully covered with chalk indicates. The rotor disc has uneven surface. For the cloth surface on brake pad shows high area friction on the rotor. And for the surface not colored shows low area friction on the rotor disc. Procedure to determine straight, straightness of slide pins. The function of the pin is for guiding the proper angle for how the brake pad meets the disc. If the caliper is not free to move, the caliper might be bent or binding guide pins. Then slide the guide pin. If the guide pin move in perfect circle, it means the guide pin is in good condition. Disc brake surface inspection. We use a die gauge to identify the surface of the disc brake whether it is flat or not. Press the die gauge pin onto the surface of the disc brake. After that, rotate the disc brake 360 degrees slowly. Refer to the die gauge reading. If the reading is toward a positive value, then the rotor disc has a bump. And if the die gauge reading is towards a negative value, the, then the surface of the rotor disc has a slope. Rotor disc measurement. This is how we inspect the thickness of the rotor disc. 
using vernier caliper measure at this at six different place around the di diameter of the rotor about 10 mm from the outer ring then record six measurement for the rotor disc this brake assembly Firstly, assembly the rotor disc and take the brake caliper to line it up nicely with the rotor disc. Tighten the screw of the brake caliper to the wheel hub. Tighten the screw using a top wrench with size 14mm. Assemble the wheel of the vehicle to the wheel hub using box socket size 20mm. After that, remove the jack stand and put down the jack from the vehicle. So, in conclusion, in this lab we should know and can identify all the main parts in brake caliper. We also can identify the condition of rotor disc by use the dial gauge. We also can identify the condition of brake pad by do the rub test and lastly we also can identify the thickness of brake pad and rotor disc by measure it with vernier caliper. So that is from us for video demonstrate lab 4. Thank you.